Hi guys, this is Shiva Reddy. Welcome to the session on synchronization in Java. In this session, we are going to look at what is meant by synchronization and what is the advantage of uh, using the synchronization. And also, we are going to look at uh, the different ways how we can implement synchronization in Java. Along with that, we are going to look at uh, the uh, disadvantages of the synchronization also. So before we go ahead with the synchronization, let us see the concepts first. So synchronization is a mechanism in which uh, while multiple threads are trying to access the common shared resources by uh, synchronization is a tool which is going to allow you only one thread to access the shared resources at a time. I am going to explain this one using a diagrammatic representation. If you see in a process, we'll have a multiple threads and uh, all these threads are trying to access the shared memory location. Now let us consider thread 1, thread 2 and thread 3 are trying to access the shared memory location of the variable. Now the scenario is like thread 1 is trying to read, an, uh, read a value from the shared location and also thread 2 is trying to update the value and thread 3 also trying to update the value. Then what happens is as it is uh, parallelly three threads are trying to access the same uh, shared variable, there might be a problem of memory inconsistency and also one thread can interfere the another thread. So this is the basic problem for don't implement the synchronization. So what synchronization is going to do is it is going to make sure that whatever the um, the access of the shared resources uh, when multiple threads are trying to access the shared shared location, then it will restrict only one thread at a time. It can uh, it can uh, access the value of the shared resources so that it is going to uh, make a memory consistency across the, all the threads. So synchronization is a tool which is going to restrict uh, multiple threads are trying to access the shared, shared uh, resources. It will allow only one thread at a time. So now we are going to see this concept programmatically. So I am, my, I am opening my Eclipse. Now I already run a one program to explain you what might be happening if we don't implement the synchronization. So now let us consider in this program, I just uh, I explained it the high level before um, we see the output, then we will see the in detail about the program. Now in the main method, basically what we have is bank account is the one where we have in a, uh, where we have initially assigned as a thousand uh, balance in the account and I am creating a two threads when with the withdrawal account, we which actually uh, which is actually uh, implementing the runnable interface. So we are going to create a two threads which are trying to simultaneously withdraw the amount. Amount is nothing but the shared resource for these two threads. Now if we don't implement the uh, threads, uh, if we don't implement the synchronization, what is going to happen is more than one thread at a time it is trying to access the variable so that there is a inconsistency will happen. Let us consider if you see the scenario here. Um, first it is balance before t2 withdrawal is 910 and then balance after t2 withdrawal is 900. Again if you see here balance uh, before t1 withdrawal is 900 because if you see here and uh, a balance before t2 withdrawal is 900 because ultimately what happens is if at this state 900 is the balance when t1 is trying to withdraw the amount then ideally it should be like a 890 because every withdrawal we are trying to remove uh, trying to subtract the uh, 10 uh, balance from the main balance so ideally it should be 890 here but because of we, di we didn't implement the synchronization, what happens is multiple threads are trying to access the shared resources. Hence, there is a memory inconsistencies happen. Now, I am going to explain in detail about the program. Now, let us see here. Bank account. This is a bank. Bank account is a, uh, a plain uh, Java. Uh, uh, it is a Java clutch which, which having the balance as a member variable and one constructor which is going to initialize the balance and default constructor is going to be zero and to get the balance we have the get balance and the withdrawal what it is going to do is how much amount we are going to pass to it from the main balance it is going to um, it is going to subtract the 10 amount for the each iteration and it is going to return the balance now if you see the uh, withdrawal account uh, um, implementation which is going to implement the runnable interface where we have the bank account. So this is nothing but the shared resources. 
for the multiple threads bank account is the share resources and on the share resources what is the main uh, variable we are trying to consider as a share resource is the balance so now what is happening is balance is going to be the share resources across the multiple threads when it is trying to run so withdrawal account again it is going to tell the bank and amount whatever the amount we are going to pass here and then here in the run method what we are doing is for each uh, for i equal to 0 i less than 20 i plus plus we are iterating for the 20 times and each time run ha what happens is account dot withdrawal amount will amount is nothing but the 10 every each iteration it is going to subtract the 10 rupees from the uh, initial balance and it is going to return the amount now because of we didn't implement the synchronization here more than one thread trying to access the share resources so in order to eliminate this problem we are going to use the synchronization and synchronization can be applied at the three three level one is synchronization block synchronization method and static synchronization first let us see what is meant by synchronization block so now what we can do is we can uh, synchronization block is a small set of the block where uh, the piece of the code where you are thinking that it is going to be um, which making the inconsistency of the your uh, uh, resources where you can apply here where you apply you can apply there so synchronization block this is going to take the resource so here synchronization always you can pass the shared resources where you want to uh, allow only one thread at a time for example in our case this is the uh, account is the one which has the shared resources so now what i am doing is i am putting this piece of the code inside of it now what happens is now what happens is when multiple threads are trying to access before this one it will come like a um, parallel multiple threads come but once it uh, comes to the synchronized block from here only one thread at a time it can uh, it will allow the inside to execute the process now let us consider t1 t2 threads comes first t1 will come here it will acquire the lock so by default java uses the intrinsic locks what happens is whenever in order to execute the any synchronized block or synchronized method or static synchronization it has to acquire the lock once it acquires the lock then only it will come inside of it as long as the uh, once a, one thread is trying to one thread already taken the lock then how many threads are uh, coming to access this block will be in the queue that means those are waiting for the to acquire the lock and ex again to execute the process now one thread t1 is come here take the lock and execute this block and then it is going to release the lock once the release happens now t2 will come to uh, acquire the lock process the block and then it will release the lock until it releases it will not allow the any other threads to enter into this block hence this is called as an restriction of uh, um, restriction of uh, restriction of the shared resource access by allowing only one thread at a time so this is how you are going to implement the synchronized uh, block now when i run this program now you do not see that um, whatever the overlapping previously we have seen the output now we can't see that output here now i will show the output you can see that this will be in the sequential manner now you see here 1000 990 980 970 like that you do not see anywhere you can maintain the previous inconsistency of the data because by using the synchronized block it will allow only one thread at a time to enter into the block and once that execution completes then only the second thread will coming into the picture now the another um, another implementation is synchronized method how we are going to implement the synchronized method is it is very simple you can go to the any uh, method where you want the synchronization for example this is the withdrawal the method actually which is uh, um, which is the main um, main code where it is trying to update the balance so here what we are going to do is we are going to apply the synchronized keyboard before the method now what happens is when multiple threads are trying to access this method 
only one thread will allow uh, only one thread at a time it will allow instead of this method and other threads will be in the waiting for the queue to acquire the lock so the similar logic will be applied here also now if you see here you when multiple threads are trying to access here first it will come to till this one many threads will come once it comes to this block it will allow only one thread at a time to access the shared value now i am running this program again okay now you can see the output as see here this is the same sequence it has followed t1 come withdrawal happened t2 came withdrawal happened t3 uh, again t1 come withdrawal so it is going to maintain the consistency across the all the values so that is the one way you can implement and another one is using the static synchronization the main uh, when you apply the uh, synchronized at the method level it is it is at like a object level because um, when you are trying to call the this method using the object reference you are going to call hence what happens is this is nothing but the uh block 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 um, when you apply a synchronized at the method level it is it is tied to the instance of that particular object or the instance for that uh, class but if you want to acquire a lock on the class level then you are going to use the static synchronization that means you can apply the keyword static which means whenever any thread is trying to access then what happens is the lock lock acquisition is at the static uh, class level that means how many threads are trying to access this class then what happens is only one thread at a time it will allow to acquire the lock on this class so this has the wider range okay so one is block level it has a shorter um, shorter duration of the lock mechanism method level it has the higher it is a superior uh, if you if you thinking that if there is any process which requires the method level locking then you can go but if you if you are thinking that it needs to be applied the class level that means only one thread at a time it needs to be updated for the class level then you can apply the static synchronization so this is going to because uh, this is going to give you the um, error because we are trying to access the non static variable from the static constant so you can apply here also we need to put public sorry public static okay now again if i run this program you can see the same output as um, we have seen earlier we do not see any thread interference or the memory inconsistency happening here so this is the basic advantage of the um, basic advantage of the uh, synchronization so whenever we are you whenever you are working with the any particular resources where multiple threads are trying to access the shared resources then you have to protect a restriction by allowing only one thread at a time by using either it might be a synchronized block a synchronized method and a synchronization a static synchronization that is the uh, uh static synchronization nothing nothing but the applying the synchronization at the class object level now the question is which one is the better now uh, in order to judge this which one is better it is based on your requirement and based on the resources uh, uh, based on the resources you are using for example out of this method let us consider um, the synchronized block is going to be a very shorter period uh because uh, if you consider here right the if you apply a block level then you have a thousand lines of the code uh, in this method but you want to apply only for the few lines of the code then it is always better to have the synchronization block at only these two lines of the code now what happens is if you don't implement the synchronization properly then one thing is deadlock situation might be happening and second one is it is going to be impact the performance of the application very badly because now what we are trying to do is if we implement the synchronization 
when multiple threads are trying to uh, access we are restricting only one thread at a time that means remaining threads are already in the queue waiting for to process the next uh, set of lines hence to make sure that synchronization is always tied up with the performance if you don't have the complete uh, knowledge of the view of the what is happening in the application if you because of for simply saying if you implement uh, the synchronization concept without having uh, without knowing the proper details of the system then the performance of the application will be badly impacted hence make sure that first you need to understand the system and then try to apply the based on the your requirement either it is the block level or if you think that whatever the lines of the code you are defining in this class in this method it everything needs to be uh, serialized when multiple threads are trying to access then you can go with the uh, go with the synchronized method but if you think that at the class level itself we want to acquire the log that means only one thread at a time it can access the class resources then you can go with the static synchronization so so based on the analysis of the application and the requirement please be wise to take the decision any any of these above um, three uh, three ways so that you can restrict the access of uh, shared resources effectively and if we don't implement the synchronization properly one is deadlock situation happens and second one is going to be the performance of the application is going to be badly impacted okay so hope you are clear with the uh, concept of static block um, uh, static uh, methods uh, static uh, method and uh, um, synchronize sorry um, synchronization block and uh, synchronization method and static synchronization and if you have any questions please uh, comment on my youtube video thanks for watching